and we're going to be taking a look at how to build a Go API using AWS SAM, and that includes AWS Lambda as well as an AWS HTTP API. Um, so I'm going to assume that you already have an AWS account set up as well as the AWS CLI and AWS SAM CLI set up locally. And if you don't, I will have the links of the <clears throat> instructions of how to do, um, do so in the description. All right, so first we are going to want to open up a command prompt wherever you want to set up your project. So I'm going to do it in my programming folder. And I'm going, so this is the folder that I want to have my project in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Sam in it. And so then it'll ask us what type of project that we want to set up. And we want to do AWS quick start templates. So we type one and enter. And then it'll ask you where, how you want to build it, whether as a zip to S3 or an image upload that you upload to ECR. Today we want to upload a zip to S3, so we're going to put one. And then it gives you all the different options of the run times that you want to build. Um, whereas in this case, we're looking to deploy a Go application, so that's option four. And then you can specify a project name. Um, we're going to be just building a uh, application that will like parrot your name out. Um, so I'm just going to name it Parrot App. You can name it whatever you want. Um, and then it'll go ahead and it will build out the basic template for you um, after we select which template. If we want an AWS step functions or just a hello world example. Um, step, we're not looking at step functions today, so we're just going to use the hello world example. So then it generates the application, and if I print it out, you can see that we have now a folder called Parrot App. So if I navigate into the Parrot App and print that out, um, we now have a folder called Hello World, as well as a few files that it set up for us. So what I'm going to do is I will open up this folder in Visual Studio Code, and we can take a look at what it made. So first it made a folder that contains a go.mod, so for gold modules, as well as a test file and a main file. All right, it also created a make file that just calls Sam build for us, as well as a basic readme about how Sam works, um, as well as the Sam template. Um, we won't We'll be adjusting this a little bit right uh, later to create a new serverless function that will pair out our name. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new folder. And then you can name this folder whatever you want, just whatever you name it. It also has to be the package name of your Go mod um, that you create um, that you'll notice in a little bit. I'm just going to name it Parrot because, um, and then from there, we we'll want to create a new file. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it main.go because it will be the main function of our Lambda application or our API. So within there, I'm just going to do package main and going to just define the main function so it can compile. And then we're going to want to open up another command prompt and navigate into our parrot directory. So I'm inside of my parrot directory. And then we're going to want to initialize um, our Go mod um, with our package name. So my package name is Parrot. So it creates the new Go mod. And then from there, we're going to want to import a few uh, Lambda uh, dependencies. So that will be github.com forward slash AWS forward slash AWS dash lambda dash go slash events as well as the same thing but instead of events we want to do lambda. 
so these are the two packages that AWS provides that we need to build and run a Lambda application. Next, we need a handler function. And this takes in a um, request, and that's from a event.api gateway proxy request, and it returns events. This should be plural events. Uh, events dot API gateway proxy request and an error. And then within our main function, uh, we have to specify that we want to run our handler function. So we're just going to do lambda dot start and pass in our handlers. So that tells lambda that we want to run this function when our API gets called. And for this, we're just going to take a query parameter that was passed into our API. And if the, there is one there, we're going to return that as like, hello world or hello your name. Or if that's not there, we're going to look at an environment variable and get the default. Um, and we kind of have an environment variable for the default value of that um, name if there's not one specified in the query parameter. Um, or we're going to just have a default one in case that there is no environment variable. So we're going to have like three different options for the string that we're going to return from our API. Um, so first off, we're going to want to specify, we're going to want to look up the environment variable to see if we can get the default. We're going to do os uh, name found. Uh, we want to define that from os.lookupenv. And we can name this environment variable whatever we want. I'm just going to name it default underscore name. So if we do not find um, an environment variable there, we want to just set it to be a default of world. Um, so if there's no environment variable called default name, the name that we're just going to return is world. So um, from there, we want to see if this request includes a query parameter for the name. So I'm just going to do if temp name comma OK is um, defined as request dot query string parameters. And then we're going to have a query string of name. If that's OK, then we want to name is equal to temp name. So from here, no matter, uh, these are just two different ways that name may be um, set if there's not a default name or if it was specified in the query parameters. No matter what happens, we want to return events.api gateway proxy request. And then from here, we can specify um, whatever kind of stuff that we want to return in our API gateway response. Speaking of which, this should be proxy response. My apologies. Um, so we want to return a response. And then within this response, all today that we want to do is return a body. And we're just going to return a very simple body of fump.sprintf. We're just going to format a string. We're going to do hello, comma, and then we want to output a string. So we're going to do percent %s, exclamation point. And then we just need to pass in the string that we're looking to put in there. And then lastly, uh, we need to put in a status code of 200. And then since we're returning a proxy response and an error, we need to do comma nil because there are no errors. Um, so there we have our very simple um, Lambda function all set up. So now what we need to do is we need to just tell um, AWS Sam about it. So we need to go into template.yaml. And what I'm going to do is having this uh, type as an API. It sets up an old type of API. It uses AWS REST API. Um, a newer and cheaper way to do it is with a HTTP API. Um, so I'm just going to switch it to that um, to incur lower costs as well as it's a little bit faster um, than a REST API. So from there, I'm just going to copy this whole section, so we don't have to change as much. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'm going to change from hello world function to parrot function. And so this, and then we want to switch this code URI. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to change it to whatever your package name was. So I'm going to change it to parrot. And same with the handler, parrot. So I'm changing that because it's the package name. Um, again, it's a HTTP API. And we want to specify the path that it's on. So I'm just going to do slash parrot. And it's a get. And then right here, you can specify our environment variables that we want. So I'm going to change this to default underscore name, because that's the environment variable that I named here. And then whatever I want it to be here. So I'm just going to like say um, default name. So um, because we adjusted uh, from an API to HTTP API, we're going to need to delete the outputs, because some environment variables get changed from that. Um, and then we should be good to go. So after we at, after we have finished our template, what we're going to want to do is we want to run on SAM build. And what this will do is it will build all of our Lambda applications for us. So once we have um, built our application, we're going to want to test it locally. So we can write SAM local start dash API. So what this will do is it'll use Docker to start up a local version of our Lambda API so that we can test it out without having to deploy to AWS and incur charges. So we're going to want to go to a web browser and if we just type localhost 3000 because that's the port that it's running on slash parrot you can see that it's a hello default name and that's because right here our environment variable is default name and it, what is it? Uh, right here it just prints hello name. So if we change the query parameter, uh, query parameter, we can do like uh, name is equal to Brian. And now it says, hello, Brian. Uh, this even works that if you put spaces with percent 20, like um, uh, HTTP encoding, you can do spaces and it'll say, hello, Brian builds. Um, so that's just a very, very simple Go uh, Lambda API that we just built and we're testing locally. But this doesn't very work. This doesn't work very well if we want to actually be able to use this um, publicly. So what we can do is we can run SAM deploy dash dash guided. And then it will have us um, walk through us how we want to deploy it to um, AWS. Now again, this will only work if you've logged into AWS already. So make sure you've done that before. Links to do that will be in the description. Um, so we're gonna want a stack name. Um, I'm just gonna name it parrot app. Um, you can name it whatever you want. And then whatever region that you wanna deploy it in, the default for me is US East one, and that's where I wanna deploy it. So I'm just gonna hit enter. Um, and I want to confirm the changes before I deploy. It'll tell you what it's going to set up before it actually deploys it. So I'm going to do yes. And we're going to want um, Sam to create some roles for our different applicate for different resources. Uh, and then this is talking about we do not have authorization defined. This just means that there's anyone can invoke your Lambda function from the API, which for now, that's fine as well as for our parrot functions, the same thing. Anyone can access it just over an HTTP API, so that's fine. And then it's asking if you want to save um, to a configuration file so you don't have to answer all these questions again. And then you can specify the configuration file name. I'm just going to leave that as the default and same with the environment. And so now it's uploading our application to S3 and it is uh, looking at the different resources that it needs to create. Um, so here's all the resources that, is, that it will create for our application. It'll create a few different serverless HTTP, HTTP APIs. It'll upload our functions with some IAM roles for them. Um, yep, and so now uh, you can take a look, make sure everything that looks good, because uh, this it tells you what uh, resources that um, Sam will create for you within AWS. So all of these you could incur, incur charges for, but most of these either are very cheap or are free within the free tier. Um, so we're going to want to deploy these changes. And so this will use CloudFormation to deploy all of these for us.
So if we go into if we go into CloudFormation, you can see that currently we can see our stack um, and that it's creating in progress. Um, and we can watch as our resources are still being created, as well as you can keep an eye down here. So I'll just leave both of these up while we wait for it to finish. Oh, and it's done. I didn't see that up at all. That was totally real time. Um, didn't doesn't take very long. So now what we can do is we can go over to our AP on the AWS console, we can go to our API gateway. And if we click on the API that it made, we can see that this here's the invoke URL. So if we open this up, uh, it'll first say that it's not found. But just like before, we can invoke um, Parrot. And so there it is. It shows our default name still. Um, and we can do query parameters like before, Brian or Brian. 20 build and it works just like before and you have a publicly running go um, lambda function running on AWS and it was that simple you can add more functions and endpoints and different methods all using AWS SAM and it can deploy it and change all that stuff for you if you change a function it'll automatically decide and figure out for you what resources need to be changed so that you're not like changing a bunch of stuff um, unnecessarily in AWS. So that's pretty powerful. It's pretty cool. Um, and you don't have to worry about scaling because with AWS Lambda, it'll automatically scale up and down according to demand. And uh, to once you're done with this, if you want to uh, delete all of the resources so that you don't incur charges or if you're not going to use it for and to clean up your AWS account, what we can do is we can go over to cloud formation and then whatever you named your stack. So again, my stack was named Parrot app. So I'm going to click on that and then we can click delete. And then I can delete, delete stack and you can see over here that in resources, all of these things are getting deleted. And if we refresh, it'll delete them all so this has been deleted now this one's getting deleted still and so all in all they're all deleted now so if i go over here to cloud permission stacks it's no longer there anymore um and so just that easily all of our http um apis as well as our lambda functions were deleted for us we don't have to worry about um charges for those or those getting executed if we refresh this that page is now missing um because it doesn't exist, we just deleted it. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Um, leave a comment if you have any suggestions or um, on how I can improve or for future videos, um, or if it just helped, all right? Well, thanks, have a great day.